Hello and welcome. Here is another video on language families. So today we are going to look at how English and Hindi ultimately prove to be cousins. And we'll be looking at the Indo-European family of languages. So let's start. Now, note these similarities. I have a list of words in from Hindi, from English, a couple of words from Russian, a few words from Italian and a few from Greek. In Hindi there is this word Dwar. We have Dwaraga, we have Dwara. Basically the meaning of door. In English we have a door. In Russian there is a dwer. Hindi we have this word Kamra, room. And in Italian, we have the same word, the camera, which means room, uh, from which the word camera also came. And we had, have ruthir and ruthiram, which is blood. In English, we have red. In Hindi, we have hriday. In many Indian languages, we have hriday, hridayam, which is heart in English. And in Italian, kurore. Or Greek has a word cardiacos. In Hindi we have pita. English there is a father. Italian we have padre. Greek pateras, all meaning father. Hindi mother, mother, similar to mother. Mitera, Greek. Hindi do, English two. Russian dua, Italian due, and Greek dio. See how these words are similar in these apparently very different languages. Hindi and different related languages are spoken in northern parts of India. English is spoken, we know, had its origin far away in England, and Russia, again, far away from English and from Hindi. Italian, you know where it is, near the Medi uh, Mediterranean Sea. Greek, also Mediterranean region. How come there are such similarities between words, we call them, in different languages? So that is why I said, looks like in, not only English and Hindi, but Russian, Italian, Greek and Hindi all seem to be cousins. Let's see how it works. We first need to have an idea of what is called language families. People living in the south of India may be aware that there is a Dravidian family of languages. All the major South Indian languages belong to the Dravidian family or the Dravidian group of languages. We have Telugu, we have uh, Kannada, we have Tamil, we have Malayalam and many, many other smaller languages spoken in different pockets of southern India all belong to the Dravidian family. So that takes us to the concept of language families. Perhaps there was a single group of people whom now we call Dravidian who grew in population, moved to different parts of the land and their languages diverged from each other and became independent languages. Very often it has happened in history. It's called divergent, divergent development of languages. There can also be convergent development where two languages come together and become one. But most of the major language family formation or bifurcation has been through what we call divergence of languages. So we, we saw how Dravidian family is there. Um, then we have a very big family of languages called the Sino-Tibetan languages, which contain much of the languages spoken in, in China, in Tibet and areas like that. We have Niger or Niger Congo family of languages, which is again a large family spoken in different parts of Africa. Africa has, like India, more than one language family. 
and we have austronation i've taken just four examples there are many many language families in the world across the world and i have only taken four to demonstrate and there is another family of languages called austronation family which is which contains the languages spoken in madagascar strangely which is near africa and in in malaysia and in many parts of the pacific ocean many islands in the pacific have languages which belong to this big family so when we say there is a family of languages there need not be great obvious similarity between these languages well that is where the issue of hindi and english and the relation comes that takes us to another story of a gentleman named william jones mr william jones was an englishman who was a uh, was very very much interested in philology or the study of languages and he came to india as an officer during the british raj the word raj interestingly has similar similar forms in different other languages related to sanskrit raj rex rix etc uh, are related words coming back to india in the 18th century William Jones was an officer in India at that time and he was a, a enthusiastic scholar of languages and he he studied sanskrit extensively and that resulted in the west discovering sanskrit uh, as we discussed in one of our earlier videos how in the west latin and greek was considered to be noble languages and the actual languages spoken in the different countries were also considered important while all the other languages in asia or africa were considered to be native and insignificant including sanskrit but william jones discovered he found that sanskrit was as rich a language or even more than greek or latin and that was he, he was instrumental in the west discovering sanskrit and many western scholars as we know since then have studied sanskrit with great enthusiasm so william jones uh, founded the asiatic society of bengal in 1784 and in his speech the speech he made in the third anniversary of the society in 1786 he spoke on the similarities that we spoke to slides back the similarities he found between sanskrit words and latin words and greek words and english words and he came up with the idea that these languages were all members of one big family of languages which he called proto indo european in linguistics we use this word proto about a language which which existed long ago we have evidence that it was there but we don't have any written evidence such languages we called proto so proto indo european is a language which william jones argued from which many languages spoken in asia and europe have finally emerged so now we will look at indo-european family of languages so now i have to say that hindi russian german greek italian they all are members of one family and that family is called indo-european family of languages so this picture here i've intentionally avoided labels so we'll have a rough familiarity in the beginning all the colors here except these dull colors here which are non indo european areas all the other colors stand for places where indo european languages are spoken today we see much of india has this color much of india and sri lanka much of sri lanka the tip the southern tip the northern tip of sri lanka has uh dravidian languages uh, tamil predominant immigrant population but very interestingly even though sing um, ceylon is far or sri lanka is far from 
northern India, Sinhalese is a Indo-European language, not Dravidian. Anyway, so you see much of India and Iran here, you have much of Russia and whole of Europe, whole of Europe, all these languages are Indo-European. There are a, a couple of small places here, patches here in Europe which are not Indo-European. Other than that, the whole of Asia and Europe have Indo-European languages. And we have here China and Mongolia, which is again Sino-Tibetan branch. And we have so many other families that we spoke of here. For example, Arabia has another family or other families of languages. And Africa has other families of languages. And if we travel north, you will reach Canada and North America. And if you travel this way, also we can reach America. But that's another story. Now, let's look at this. Uh, I have an idea about this long greenish color, all belonging to one family, which we, we to be in which Russia is a member. We call that family Baltic Slavic. And all this red here, including the British Islands, all the red here, this is Iceland. And this is a little area belonging to Norway here. We have Sweden here. And we have Germany. We have Netherlands, Belgium here, and Switzerland here, and Netherlands here. All these red, they all are related languages. That means the languages spoken in England, in Norway, in Sweden, in Germany, in Austria, in Switzerland. Well, there may be other languages too, but predominant languages in all this area belong to one language family. We call that family Germanic. Let it be there. And now we have another set, another color here. This is this big patch is French, or this is France. And you have Spain here, Portugal here, Italy, and this is Romania. And all these languages have related languages. All these countries have related languages. And that language family we call Romance or Roman. So Indo-European family is a big family of languages. And each has a smaller subfamily. You have a family called Germanic here from which English came, from which German came. And we have a family called Roman here from which Spanish came. French came, Italian, and we have the, all this green and the greenish color belong to a large family, covering a large area rather, called Slavic, Baltic Slavic. This light green is Baltic and the rest is Slavic, and you call them Baltic Slavic family, which is an individual family. And we have a small patch here, a little blue, which is Albanian family, and we have here, this yellow is Greek family. And uh, interestingly, we have a little blue here, a violet here, violet, which is Armenian family of languages. So we have mentioned at random a few language families belonging to the Indo-European branch. But we will look at it in great detail. Let's look at it in great, greater detail. I have labeled here. I put labels now, all the red Germanic, that means Indo-European people originally believed to have lived somewhere here, somewhere here, moved to all these parts of the world in search of living space and their languages diverged into different languages, each further diverging, forming a complex network of language families. So we are looking at the language family called Indo-European, of which we are interested in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 sub-families. There are also two more families belong to Indo-European that we have identified. They are called Tocharian and Hittite, but they are extinct languages and we are not going to talk about them. And there are also two relatively small families of which these languages still exist, people still use it. 
One is Albanian, spoken here in Albania and the regions nearby. And the, the family called Armenian, which is spoken in this small area. They are living languages, they still exist, but we do not talk much about it in the further slides. The, lang the language families we will be talking a bit about are Germanic, which is an important family for us because English belongs to Germanic family. And Indo-Iranian is also of great interest to us because most of the languages of Northern India, Hindi, Marathi, Oriya, Kashmiri, Bihari, all the languages, Punjabi, all these languages spoken in all these parts of India came from this branch. Also Persian belongs to this, this branch. And we see here uh, countries, Iran, Iran is there, you have Afghanistan, you have Pakistan, you have Tajikistan here, all speaking Indo-Iranian languages. And above that, it's all Baltic Slavic languages, Russia, Old Russian Federation, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, such countries, Belarus and other countries here. They all have similar one huge family, which we jointly call Baltic Slavic family. Important to us because we are neighbors. And here we have the Baltic family. And what we call the Romance languages is also important. The Romance essentially mean belonging to Roman. So Rome is inside Italy, but we call all the languages spoken in these countries Romance. Which are the, which are the countries? Italy is here, France is here, Spain, Portugal and Romania. All these countries have languages that came from a single language. So we say that's a small family of languages called the Romance family. It's also called Italic. It's called Roman. Now we have a, a little flag here, Celtic. Celtic is uh, used to be the language spoken in uh, much part of England, the British Islands. But later they were taken over by, by another Germanic Celtic was an independent family by a member of a Germanic language, which we call English today. The, the, that came from these regions. The English developed in these parts and they migrated to this island, kicking out the Celtic people who are living there. And today, Celtic is spoken only in very small areas. Within France, we have this tip, which is called Brittany. We have uh, Celtic language spoken there and in some parts of England, Ireland, in Scotland, in Cornwall we have here you have colours, here Wales we have Celtic but Celtic is a family that is uh, that, that has a very small number of people using it today but very important uh, to English language students and literature students. So the major families that belong to the Indo-European group have been mentioned and you would have noticed that there is a little patch here and here and here which are not Germanic. So within Europe the, the language spoken in Finland and in this, this little area here and also Hungary here they are um, they, they belong to another family called Uralic family. They belong to the Uralic family uh, so it's very, very interesting. You have uh, Sweden here, but the neighboring country, Finland, has a totally different language family, long, fam, uh, has a language that belongs to another family. So does Hungarian belong to another family. So together, these countries, like Denmark is here, Norway, Sweden, Iceland, we call them Scandinavian. And this, uh, these islands belong to Norway. So you have this bit we called Scandinavian. We'll come to that. So this is the overall picture of the Indo-European language families. Uh, we'll come back for more details. Here um, uh, um, we can take a look at the Indo-European family of family to which Baltic Slavic is one division. Indo-Iranian is another division to which Hindi, Urdu, Bengali, Marathi belongs and Iranian is there to which Tajiki, uh, the language of Tajikistan, modern Farsi all belongs. Baltic Slavic to which most of the Russian, Ru Russian language belongs to it. And we have Polish, Czech, 
Slovakian, all these languages, Bulgarian, all belong to the Baltic Slavic division. And we have this Germanic family to which English belong, belongs. And we have the Roman family to which Spanish, French, etc. belongs, Italian, uh, Portuguese. Then Celtic, which is, as I said, a minority kind of language. And we have here Armenian, Albanian, which are again a very minority language and we have Greek here. Greek is a major language but spoken only in uh, Greece and a couple of few neighboring islands. Now we look at greater detail at the two at two major divisions within Indo-European family. Now I, 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 I hope I haven't rushed you into it. You see this Indo-European family, uh, it has eight major language families of which we are looking at six now and we can divide these six families into two groups. One is called the Kentum group to which Germanic, Celtic, Greek and Roman families belong. Predominantly the European languages are said to belong to the Kentum group. The green, the red ones, Germanic. This little tip here, Celtic. This, these areas, Roman. And you see, we have we have neglected Albanian for the time being. Right now, in the we call this group Kentum group because in the evolution of these languages from the Indo-European, some in some words the. A cur sound was retained. A cur sound. For example, in Latin word kent, today in Fran French language it is, it is pronounced cent, but the original Latin pronunciation was kent. Kent meant hundred, you know, the word century, uh, ten cents of land when we talk about it. It's all the same. It's kent, which is hundred. This cur sound here. Modern equivalent English is 100 and there is a reason for the cur becoming her here and ter becoming der here which we will explain later. The point here is we are interested in the Kentum group of languages, all these areas, where a cur sound occurs in the word denoting 100. Another example would be, this is uh, an example that I recently came across, the word Peku, meaning cattle, has this cur sound here. Now let's let's see what happens to these words in the other group, which is the Shadam group. So we have this this group. It's called Kentum because the cur sound is there in words like C E N T Kent and P C U Peku, and the languages families are Germanic, Celtic, Greek, Roman. Here we have the Shadam group. Only two major families are there, the Balto, Baltic Slavic family and the Indo-Iranian family. In these languages, the original Indo-European sound became S instead of K. So instead of Kentum or Kent, it is Shadam. We are familiar with that word. Sao, Hindi, meaning hundred, came from that. Shadam is 100 in Sanskrit, Shatam, and Pashu, meaning animal in Indian languages, um, not uh, Sanskrit based languages. See, you see how Peku became Pashu. The word Pashu and the word Peku are a good example, just like Kent and Shatam, for showing that these two are can be considered to be two different groups for the sake of convenience. And the main uh, way of categorizing is the way this cur sound becomes sir sound in uh, this side of the Indo-European division. Now, uh, to make it more clear, we can say that the whole of Indo-European families can be divided into two as the Kentum group and the Shadam group. Kentum is also because it is a cur sound in Kent and Peku. 
and shatam group is called shatam because in wherever there is a k in these in in, in this group of languages there would, would be an s sound in the shatam group uh, we can call it shatam or satam as europeans would call it and um, here i would note i would draw your attention to, attention to an interesting thing peku uh, meant cattle today we have that sound in the word pecuniary where it means related to finance because once upon a time cattle was considered to be uh, currency wealth so peku pecuniary the, the word k sound and the sh in indian languages are interesting parallels that you need to keep in mind so we have looked at how many of the languages most of the languages in asia and europe belong to one huge language family and we saw that there are many sub families within that and then we said that the whole family can be divided into two kentam group and shatam group and now we before we conclude this talk on language families we have established that hindi italian greek russian are are all cousins now that we have done that now we look at the germanic language family in particular because english belongs to that family germanic all the red marked countries areas have germanic languages it has three major divisions we said again smaller families that came through divergent development the west germanic east germanic and north germanic today we have west and north germanic families we don't have any east germanic families which have all died they have ex become extinct gothic was one such language but we, we no longer have that language spoken anywhere so we look at the north which is these countries here including denmark this tip is denmark denmark norway sweden iceland in these languages that is norwegian swedish danish and icelandic modern languages belong to the northern germanic family they are also called scandinavian languages they are the people who who we talk about as the vikings the norsemen etc and now coming to the western side you have modern german and modern english these two are the main members of the western family we can see and also the language of uh, netherlands which is dutch and afrikaans which is a language of south africa which is a combination of dutch and south african languages uh, they also belong to the western division yeah that is uh, the germanic language family which we need to remember that english german dutch swedish norwegian danish and icelandic they are all languages belonging to the germanic family this is something we we have to have a clarity uh, when we talk about the descent of english this is actually uh, we have been tracing the descent of english as well from the indo european to the kentum family to germanic to west germanic and then to english and finally we take a look again at the indo european families of languages family of languages we have seen that looking at it again this, this light green and the rest green baltic slavic all the red germanic celtic very small areas still spoken roman or romance languages belonging to these parts we have greek spoken by the greeks here and in these mediterranean islands here they have greek albanian in the small region albania and we have armenian here which is very near turkey and we have indo iranian much of the languages in india and um, sri lanka all in indo iranian together forming the huge indo-european family of languages so thank you i hope you enjoyed the video uh, and thank you very much for your uh, interest i would recommend that you 
pause at points and go back and listen again because um, uh, during the talk I I do not show my face I, I give more importance to the slides because that is where your focus should be and for these uh, uh, videos I always recommend that you stop pause go again if you want to read the stuff written on a slide pause and read it and make the best of it so let these videos be like little lessons for you but I have to remind you also that all my videos are very basic. I've intentionally kept them on a very basic level so that uh, if you are a BA student or a MA student or a person who is interested in uh, learning English language will be able to understand it without difficulty. So this is only a beginning. You need to go and read further and watch more videos or read more, or more on, on the net or in books about uh, the topics that we have discussed. So that is uh, if you if you are taking an exam, that is. So again, all the very best, and we'll soon meet with another video.